I don't want to um, be overstepping my bounds because I always ask permission from you, but in this case I couldn't. So I just had to go to the Divine Shepherd and he said it was all good. So, um, anyway, <laughs> I, I won't, I'll just, <laughs> yeah, we all going to get in trouble. No. Um, <clears throat> last week, as you know, you were sick and dehydrated from um, all the work you've been doing. And so, um, I had been praying, asking the Lord to send someone else so you wouldn't have to. And he laughed and he said, okay, you do it. So, um, so you know, God didn't send the sickness, but he allowed me to use it because the past two weeks, um, your congregation here has been working on something for you. And um, I needed a little more time. So it kind of worked out quite well. Not that I wanted you dehydrated. But... Um, but this, since you have a pass, you missed church last week. Um, <laughs> the pass, the missed church. Um, you know the sermon was on um, how a good shepherd, and I shared with you how a good shepherd and a father um, have the same characteristics and the same role. Remember, I read it to you? Mm -hmm. Well, I left some stuff out. Um, and so let me tell you about yourself, in case you didn't know. Would you like a tissue? Um, let me get you a tissue. I got it. Here you go. Okay. Here we go. Um, a good shepherd is um, someone who will lay down his life for his sheep. Um, the shepherd's also known as the pastor, and he's a man of godly character. He's a man of strong faith. He provides tirelessly for his sheep. I might need one of those. <laughs> He works long, hard hours asking for nothing in return other than love and relationship. He works preparing a spiritual table for his sheep to feast at. Our shepherd spends countless hours upon hours upon hours upon hours <laughs> studying God's word in order to rightly divide the word and bring forth its truth to his sheep so that it'll properly nourish them and cause them to grow and prosper in the word and in their deeds. You, our shepherd, sees to it by the best of his ability to make sure the needs of the sheep are met before his very own. You, pastor, will stick closer than a brother. You lay down your life for your sheep at all cost. You'll never forsake us. You'll tell us the truth no matter how painful or uncomfortable because of your love for your sheep. You see, a good literal shepherd of literal sheep will go after a lost sheep. And at times we all know to even bring correction will sometimes even break the leg of that sheep. To teach him a lesson, not to be cruel, but the shepherd will take that sheep and carry him upon his shoulders until he's healed so that that sheep will bind with him and bond with him and so that he will um, get used to the sound of the shepherd's voice. And on the shepherd's part, the shepherd has to carry that burden. And the word shoulder in the Hebrew means a literal shoulder, but it also means that it's a place of bearing burdens. And that's what a good shepherd does. Not only do you bear the burdens of us, your wife, your, your children, you bear the burden of each individual person in here. Amen. Um, with no thought of yourself, with no thought of the physical strain that it puts upon your body because you're not a hireling. Amen. You're a good shepherd. Amen.
Yeah. You'll even put yourself in between the sheep and the enemy. You'll, just like a literal shepherd will sleep amongst his sheep, and if they're in like a penned area, will sleep at the gate, putting his self in line of the enemy and the sheep. The enemy's got to come through the shepherd and take him out in order to get to the sheep. And what you do is battle for us because you're a good shepherd and put yourself in the line of fire of the enemy. The shepherd will also sacrifice comforts of home to tend to the sheep. He sleeps out in the rain, the heat, all hit the camper. <laughs> all forms uh, of weather and situations. He gives up the comforts to be there amongst the sheep and to be with them. And that's what you do for us. A shepherd as a pastor, let me tell you something. You are good shepherd. Because all of the work and all of the prayers and all of the tears and all of the sacrifices are worth it all to you. Because we know that your number one concern in life is not yourself. But it's to see that your sheep learn, grow, mature, and become all that God go <laughs> thanks <laughs> but it's to see that your sheep learn grow mature and become all that God created them to be that's your number one goal in life not yourself you want us to be sheep who mightily affect the kingdom of God for the Lord's glory and you my honey are a good sheep, a shepherd, who is so humble. See, a, a good shepherd, where well, he can't see it. Turn it the other way, please. Oh. We rehearsed this. He still brought him in wrong. Um, a good shepherd is really humble. And um, you, our pastor, are such a good shepherd and you are so humble that you don't know what a great shepherd you really are so in honor of you being our shepherd um, would you all like to say this in unison one two three back <laughs> Read up here. Read it because they can't see it. He can't? <laughs> it's hard to talk when you got a watermelon in your throat. It says, Our pastor and shepherd, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3.15. Amen. Woo! Yes. And that is from all your sheep. Yes. We love you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you see your, did you notice your picture? Did you notice your picture? And what's behind you? That's your legacy. Did y'all see it, guys? Amen. You could see the big angel behind it. Let me just walk real quick because I don't want to take up pastors ministering time. Look in the center behind pastor. See the angel? Can you guys see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? I'm going to come around. That's me. <laughs> come around so you guys can see it. Yeah. CCC. All right. Oh, I like that. You <laughs> bad. Yeah, I like Carl's. He put you bad, son. <laughs> you know, uh, 